Psalms 27. We begin our reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me, in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We do thank you for your goodness. We thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, I'm thankful we can come to this place of refuge, an oasis in this world where we can uh, uh, come apart from the world, assemble ourselves with the people of God, sing praise unto thee, we can enjoy one another's fellowship, or we can certainly enjoy being saved, uh, knowing the burden of sin has been lifted from our lives. Lord, we can take uh, hope and refuge from all that transpires uh, amongst thy people. Now, God, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for being a good God that certainly has blessed us well beyond our deserving. Now, Father, we ask that you'd bless those that are working with the children on the other side. Lord, what a blessing to see many of those children get saved this summer. God, I know that it's because we've put the Word of God in them. Their parents have put the Word of God in them. Their parents have lived a life before them, shown them that Jesus makes a difference. Uh, God, I'm thankful that that seed germinated in their hearts. Uh, And God, we've seen them get saved this summer. But Lord, there's some thou, Lord, that haven't reached the age of accountability. I pray that you too would uh, uh, continue to work on their little tender hearts that when they do reach that age, that, Lord, they'd trust Christ at a young age. Uh, Thank you for those that give up their Sunday night service to be a blessing, to teach, and and to help uh, in that ministry. And God bless them. I pray for those that are working with our teens, and thank you for that. And, Lord, I pray that you'd bless their efforts. Uh, Our our teenagers face so much peer pressure and many things, Lord, they face we didn't even dream of when I was their age. Uh, And, Father, I pray that, Lord, the Word of God would insulate them and help them and certainly propel them above the filth and the vile things of this world. Uh, Father, I thank you for these that have come out on a Sunday night. Lord, we certainly were blessed to sit in heavenly places this morning. I thank you for the many that got help. I thank you for the one that was saved. Uh, I thank you for being a good God, but that won't suffice for this hour. Help us from the Word of God. Lord, we know that if you do not take your church out of here throughout the night, then tomorrow we'll face another day, another week. Lord, we don't know what befalls us uh, uh, in the days that lie ahead, but God, you do. And God, I pray that you would uh, certainly help us from the word of God tonight. Uh, May we hide it in our heart that we might not sin against thee, but may we also uh, 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 allow it to uh, uh, penetrate our minds and our hearts that, Lord, uh, uh, when we're faced with temptation, we'll resist the devil and draw nigh to God. Bless now. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to three things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice in this psalm of David, David's confidence. Notice David's confidence. Uh, The Bible says in verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, When the wicked, even my enemies, my foe, came uh, upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host uh, uh, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Uh, Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. We see his confidence. 
Now, can I say that uh, amongst independent Baptists, uh, uh, there is a, a glorification of people that make a stand and that are firm in their faith, uh, but then there is also uh, uh, the declassification of people that have confidence. They say, oh, you've got to be humble and meek and lowly. Let me just give you the definition of uh, humility. Uh, first of all, humility simply means to know all your strengths, know all your weaknesses, and abide therein. Uh, friend, if God has blessed you with abilities and talents, uh, and somebody comes up to you and says, boy, you are really good in these areas in your life, and you show false humility, you say, oh, no, no, you're putting on, no, no. You're not being humble. You're being a liar. Now, you don't have to be arrogant in what God has done in your life, but you can be confident and you can look at them and you can say, you give God the glory. I am what I am by the grace of God. Uh, and uh, it's okay to be confident in some areas in your life. Here's David, a man after God's own heart. David said when the enemies came against him, uh, they stumbled and fell. It doesn't say that David retreated. Didn't say ran, he stood there. Uh, uh, the Bible says, David said, if the whole enemy should encamp around me, if war should come against me, he said, and this will I be confident. He knew in whom he had believed in, uh, and he was confident in the abilities that God uh, had given him. Why did David take on the giant in the first place? Because David had confidence in the Lord. Hmm? It's okay to be confident. It's okay to trust in what God has worked in your life. It's okay. Uh, you don't have to be a welcome mat for anybody. It's all right to be confident. Now listen, the Fosters have been accused of having too much confidence. That's probably true. But can I say, it's all right to be confident. David was confident. Let me show you something else. David also craved some things. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says this, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David craved uh, uh, something that a lot of people strive to get away from. He craved the godliest things that he knew of in his day. Now you're coming from, you know, this is coming from a man who uh, raised his father's sheep and most of the time lived without a roof over his head. He lived out in the uh, pastures tending the sheep and living amongst the sheep and now he's been blessed and been promoted uh, and he's uh, not only become a great warrior for God but he's been anointed king uh, and David's cravings uh, weren't to get away from God but to get slap dab in the middle of where God is. Amen. He craved that he might stay in the house of God. Hmm? I've never had anybody come to me and say, Preacher, uh, can I have a key to the church? I just want to live there, hang out there all the time. Now, we have had, it only happened once, they learned. Uh, there were some folks that decided they was going to have a sleep-in with all the young people, and they was going to play games and stay up all night, and play games and sing songs and do all that. And they all brought their sleeping bags. They've never asked to hang out with them teenagers here at the house of God ever again. And how come it is that when people rush in and rush out, David said, let me just dwell there. There's something about God's place. He craved that. He not only craved to stay in the house of God, he craved to see the beauty of the Lord. That's what he said. Look what it says, verse 4. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Now, we know with the natural eye, he didn't see God. We don't see God, but we can see the effects of God. Mm, seeing little Trevor get assurance, get things made right, get born again today, that's the beauty of the Lord. Right. Seeing folks that come in low but leaving out with their head lifted up because God did a work in their heart, that's the beauty of the Lord. Uh, uh, to see folks uh, 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 that once used to cuss God and once used to uh, blaspheme against the things of God, uh, uh, to sit in the house of God and raise up their hands and say, Praise the Lord. That is the beauties of the Lord. Uh, he says, I just crave to see that. I never get tired of seeing God work in people's lives. 
I never get tired of hear, hearing people brag on the Lord. You know, I, I very rarely ask for testimonies. I ask for people to brag on the Lord. Because I want to see the beauty of the Lord. What has God done for people? And then can I say he also craved uh, seeking God in prayer. Look what he said. He said, and to inquire in his temple. He's inquiring to God for the will of God for his life. He craved God in prayer. Can I help you? You'll never be any more of a powerful Christian than you have as a, an example of a powerful prayer life. The more you pray, the more God you're going to have in your life. That's where the power of God comes from. It says you have not because you ask not. And so many times we'll ask God for needs, but we don't ask God for him. David craved God, and he craved for God in prayer. We see his confidence. We see him craving. But I want you to notice David's comfort. Look in verse 5. The Bible says this, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I preached one time on the secret things of God, and there's one of them right there, the secret of his tabernacle. David found comfort when trouble came against him. He found comfort in the Lord and in the things of the Lord. He found that when trouble came to him, there was a place in the Lord that he could go to as a refuge. God always made a way of escape. Whether he was in a cave or whether he was in the camp of the Philistines, he always found comfort even in his darkest times, even when his soul was troubled. How many times throughout the Psalms uh, do we find him crying unto the Lord and the Lord delivering him out of all his trouble? He found comfort in the midst of his storms. I'm interested in verse number one. He said this, The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He's saying, with God, what do I have to fear about? And that's what I want to preach on for just a few minutes. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? In your King James Bible, 501 times do you find the word fear. Now, there's 773,692 words in your Bible, but 501 of them are dedicated to fear. Do you know why? Because we fear things. We fear things. We don't like to admit that, but we fear things. Right now, if you watch the news, you fear for our, for our country. You should. Our country is at a crossroads like never before. And if God does not grant us a space of grace, I shudder to think what our country is going to look like November 4th. Really. Amen. And to be honest with you, don't put too much confidence in who goes in either way. Put confidence in the fact the Lord's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. But people have a genuine anxiety over these things. Hmm? Listen. <laughs> I would ever, ever imagine Bill Clinton would have got two terms, but he did. I would have never, ever imagined Barack Obama would have got two terms, but he did. I would never imagine this election going one way, but I've learned don't imagine things. Just live for God each day. Because hmm? we don't know what a day brings forth. Hmm? But there are people who have a fear over that. There are people that have a fear over the disease, the virus. I imagine when they come up with a vaccine, people are going to line up around Walgreens like you've never seen to get pumped with something that who knows what's in it. Right. Hmm? They'll sell their soul for the thought of peace and safety. We did that with the Patriot Act under George W. Bush. Many of our mm, God-given rights and freedoms through our Constitution were taken away and eradicated very quickly in something called the Patriot Act. But people didn't care. We want to be safe because planes are falling out of the sky and one may hit us. Hmm? 
Can I say people fear that? People fear getting old. They do. That's why women will go get their face done like this. Isn't it amazing? You look like a clown and it doesn't change your age. You're still old. Huh? It's amazing. People fear these things. People fear all kinds of things. People fear snakes. People fear spiders. People have a fear of heights. People have a fear of getting out of bed. People have fear. Have you seen the commercials where the people got the smiley faces on a stick and they're just so depressed with life and they got to put that on, you know, the false face, they got to put that on because they're just fearful of every. Fear has taken hold upon people's lives. Uh, parents fear when their kids are little. Can't let them play out in the front yard. They fear about them going off to school. They fear about them finding friends. They fear about things. Finally, they grow up and you think, boy, I'm glad I got through that. Then they become police officers. You got to fear about that. Huh? I got to be real honest with you. The other night, I'm sitting in the living room. Ladies night. Ladies meeting night. Miss Sidney comes down. I said, where are you going? She said, Nick's coming with his motorcycle and we're going to go take a ride. Okay. Then I hear that thing crank up. Blum, 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 blum. And there was part of me thinking, do I really trust Nick with my baby doll on the back end of that thing? It's got about 16,000 cc's on it. Uh, and, I, and immediately, of all that stuff, you know what I think? Of? I think about when he wrecked that dirt bike. Remember when he wrecked that? That's the first thing I thought of. And I'm thinking, well, Jackie's got peace. Wonderful. I don't. Huh? My little girl's gone. And I'm thinking, well, she'll be back. Two hours later, finally I hear, blum, blum, blum. I'm thinking, thank the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. And then come to find out, they met up with the old people crowd and took a journey around the world. Thank you. You're supposed to be examples. Huh? She was in good hands. Yeah. But I didn't have a lot of confidence in that right at the time. I'm just telling you. You fear. Hey, listen. When I was young, I felt invincible. You know why I can't hardly walk today? Because I didn't think anything would affect me. Uh, Clint, when we played ball, you get hurt. I'm Superman. You go and play anyway. Throw some dirt on it. Take the skirt off. Throw some dirt on it. Get in there. Huh? How many times do you play hurt? And you're paying for it, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clicky knees, ankles, shoulders, neck, all of it. Huh? See, back when we played football, you led with your head. That's why I've had one neck surgery, and I, my n arms are numb half the time. Told me... So, no, oh, you don't have any more dish problems, preacher. You just got arthritis in every joint in your neck. Huh? When you get old, you don't feel invincible anymore. Matter of fact, I can't explain it. Something about when I turned 50, which was quite a few years ago. Shut up, Melissa. <laughs> Something just automatically happened when you start fearing things you never thought before. You get thoughts like, you know what, I'm a whole lot closer to the grave than I am to my youth. You know what I'm, I'm huh? Yeah, I know you do. Huh? And then I look at Miss Janet and I think, <laughs> even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. This poor dear has had more surgeries and faced more things and she's, she's like the Easter Bunny. I mean, she takes, you know, she just keeps on ticking, you know, like a Timex watch. She takes a lick and keeps on ticking. That's her, huh? Just keeps on a going. When you start looking down the road and you realize way out there all of a sudden's right here, you start fearing things. Now, we can act super spiritual, but the bottom line is there is something that we all fear. Some fear of loneliness. Some fear all kinds of things could happen. Do you ever fear that you might catch something or become something or do, you know? You fear things. David said, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Can I say David did not fear because of five simple truths? And if you apply these things, guess what? It'll help you in your fears. Can I say, first of all, David did not fear because of God's presence. Look again at verse number one. 
hope you see this. This will help you right here. In verse number one, we read it. It rolls off the tongue. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And we read that and we say, yeah, the Lord's my light. He's my salvation. He's my strength. But it goes much deeper than that. Do you know what David is really saying? The Lord is my light. That is a representation of God the Father. He is the Father of lights. He says, the Lord is my salvation. That's a picture of Jesus, the Son. We're saved through him. And he said, uh, he goes on to say, the Lord is my strength. That is a picture of the Holy Spirit of God. He's the one that gives us the strength. He's the one that indwells us. He's the one that brings unto our remembrance those things uh, uh, of the Word of God. He's the one that leads us and guides us into all truth. Uh, he's the one when Satan shows up and says you can't or you need to be afraid or you're going to fail uh, and the Spirit of God rises up in you uh, and he propels you over or through that thing. Uh, can I say with God's presence you won't fear. Now what you need to realize the next time fear begins to well up is whose you are and what he has promised. We see that David doesn't fear because of God's presence. He doesn't fear because of God's promises. You know, God has promised to never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hmm? Now we learned a long time ago when the kids went off to college, we could no longer keep an eye on them. When she was on that bike the other night, I realized I, could, I was out of control. There was nothing I could do about that. But you know who's always got an eye on them? And who can control everything? The Lord. Huh? He's a present help in time of need. And can I say, when you remember the promises of God, that He won't forsake you, that He is a friend, and that his promises are true, that he is faithful, that he is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. My dear friends, why should you fear? Isn't it amazing? When we open back up the church on Mother's Day, that we haven't had one case of COVID. You know, I've been in churches doing funerals all over the area. You would be amazed at how many churches, they, they have pews taped off. You have to wear a mask. They take your temperature when you come in. Now, I'm not throwing off on them. That's, that's their deal. That's their deal. I just choose not to live in fear. As a matter of fact, can I say a lot of this propaganda of the virus? Yes, there's a virus. But the propaganda behind the virus was to put you in fear. Hmm? Hmm? David said, of whom shall I fear? Say, preacher, what if you get sick and die? I get to go to heaven. What's so bad about that? Sure, Pastor. Hmm? You know what they do not tell you? You hear a lot of follow the science, follow the science, but they don't follow the science. If they followed the science, they'd tell us to throw away the mask. Matter of fact, the CDC's own website and many reports since then by highfalutin science says that the droplets contained in those masks from your body will do much harm to you, much more harm than going on without a mask. And can I say, even when they lift the bands of the mask, there are still going to be a lot of people wear them because they're fearful. Mm. But listen, why should I fear about that or whether I'll get hit by a bus or whether anything else will befall me. Because if you want to be in fear, you can find something to be afraid of. I kind of live like Paul did. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I'm in his hands. His hand's in the Father's hand. If God can't keep me, I'm in a mess. So of whom shall I fear? I'll just trust that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Hmm? Matter of fact, I've had people ask, do you all, you're, you're half church? Yeah. Do you maintain social distancing? Sure, as much as uh, the Holy Ghost lets us. Hmm? Do you wear masks? Nope. Always been afraid of masks. The only masked man I always liked was the Lone Ranger. 
Hmm? Now, if somebody wants to wear a mask, they can wear a mask. Hmm? I'm going to stay away from them. They're probably just going to rob me. Huh? No, I'm just teasing. I just choose to live by faith and not by fear. David didn't fear because of God's presence, because of God's promises. But can I say this? Because of God's propitiation. He knew his salvation was in the Lord. He didn't understand it. We do. We have the word of God now that Jesus became our propitiation. That he died and was buried, rose again, shed his blood. Uh, and his blood, uh, my dear friends, is on the mercy seat of God. Uh, and as the preacher read Isaiah this morning, uh, with his stripes we are healed. Uh, everything we face in this world uh, has been settled at the cross. Uh, and if we just uh, look unto the Lord, trust in the Lord, uh, depend on God, uh, your faith will, uh, will increase and your fear will diminish and you'll be able to overcome these things too many people spend too much time worrying about things out of their control the Bible said what man can say you know add a cubic to a stature what leopard can change his spots what Ethiopian can change the color of his skin why do you worry about things that are out of your control you know what you do control? How much time you spend with God in prayer. How much time you spend with God in the Word. And how much of His Word you're going to put in practice and belief. And I promise you, if you'd spend more time on that than fearing, you'd overcome many things that trip you up along life's way. Hmm. Now listen, I'm certainly not super spiritual. I don't have a, a yellow S on my chest and a red cape but I just believe God's big enough to take care of me. He's been doing it for 47 years. He's been doing it longer than that, but I've been saved 47 and a half years. And can I say God's done a pretty good job taking care of me. Been a lot of times I've failed him. I can stand before you tonight and say he's never failed me. Hmm. And can I say this? <laughs> David did not fear because he had proved the Lord. Time and time again, when he faced things, he just proved God. When he stood there and he proclaimed, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who defies the armies of God? And he said, I'll take him on. They all said, Gladly, you can have him. We've been scared to death for 40 days and 40 nights over this joker. They brought David before Saul the king. Saul said, Here, let me put my armor on you. Can you imagine? Saul's head and shoulders taller than anybody in Israel and David's a young lad and he's, Saul's wanting to put his armor on David but David couldn't move in the stuff so now he said I'll take what I've proven he says what do you need then he said Let me go down to the brook get five stones and a, sl a slingshot this sling will do the job Saul thought he was nuts much like those people you work around, those family members you got, they wonder about you coming to church and wonder about you, you know, not wearing a mask at church and all those kind of things. They do not understand what you have proven. David looked at him and said, I killed a father, uh, I've killed a lion and a bear. You see, David had been down the road with God, and when a lion and a bear went to take his father's sheep, he knew that he was in charge of the sheep. So he took out the lion and the bear. How? God's help. Why did he take five smooth stones? Goliath had four brothers. He was taking out the whole crowd. Hmm? You see, he'd walked down the road with God a few times before. And can I say, uh, by the time he writes Psalms 27, he's taken on armies, and God had not failed him. I charge you tonight, how many times has God failed you? He never has. So why don't you take those things you've been proven? Faith joy, love, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Take those things that God's put in you and overcome your fear. Hmm? See, it's kind of like this. This is crude hillbilly analogy, but it's all I got right now. It's like having two dogs. Now, you can have an Akita, by the way, 
animal shelter over, over here has got a female. 200 bucks, you can have a female for a kuna. <laughs> Full grown, beautiful. Just thought I'd throw that in. All right? Mm -hmm. Then you can have baby ones sell them for about 1500 a piece, and you're set, bro. Mm -hmm. Trying to help her brother. <laughs> yeah. But you can have a kuna. A massive of a dog. If you've never seen that dog, the head's this big. I never, I never seen a dog like that. Huh? That, that, that dog eats ham hocks for snacks. Huh? A big old dog. And then you have a dog like mine, a little fifteen-pound ankle biter. But it's amazing. You don't feed that big one, but I feed that little one. That little one's gonna be stronger than that big one you got. And whatever nature you feed is the strongest. See, when you got born again, you got two natures. The Holy Ghost moved inside of you. You got a spiritual nature. You got the spiritual man, the new man. You got the old man. Whichever one you feed the most is going to be the strongest. And the reason that we tend to fear so much is we feed the old man rather than fortify the new man. Prayer and the Word of God is what fortifies that new man. And when we prove the things of God in our own hearts and lives, my dear friends, we get so strong that fear no longer takes hold on us. Now, isn't it crazy? But doesn't this happen? How many times have you prayed for something and God answers it and you stand up and say, I'm amazed. Why are we amazed? How many we done, we've done it, haven't we? Well, I'm just amazed God heard and answered prayer. Well, read the Bible. That's what he does a whole lot of. But what amazes us, not that he did it, but that he looked our way and did it for us. Because we really know what we are. We're not the ones that stay in the Bible and stay on our knees and fortify faith. Uh, we're the ones that uh, just grope through the darkness, just barely get by, and we call on him, and he answers our prayer anyway, and it amazes us. What that should do is cause us to fortify that inward man and then pray with faith. Now expecting God to do great things. Because he's a great God. And then let me say this. What helped David not to fear was God's place. God's place. Look with me in verse 5 again. For in the time of trouble... He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. David said in the time of trouble, in those times when I feel, feel fear rising up, when I become anxious, when I become excited, when I don't know which way to turn, he says, it's in those times the Lord hides me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. Can I say some things about the place of God? It's a secret place. He says here, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Can I say there is a place by the Lord that unbelievers don't know anything about. Now it absolutely marvels me that people who never go to church, never read the Bible, they might watch some kind of, you know, slighted documentary on, you know, Discovery Channel, but how they're an expert on the Lord. But those of us who go to church all the time, they think we're crazy. But there is the secret place of his tabernacle. Now, can I help you with something real quickly? It's not the sanctuary. The temple of the Holy Ghost is us. And there is this secret place down in the gable into your soul that when fear begins to arise, the Lord shows up and he comforts you. There is a secret place place that the world doesn't know anything about, a place that the devil fears about. It's that place when you don't know you can go another step 
and then he shows up uh, and he overcomes your fear and he overcomes your anxiety and he propels you to do more for him than you would have ever done on your own. There's the secret of his tabernacle that God can use any of us to do anything for his glory. That's an amazing thing. That's one of the mysteries of God. We who are earthen vessels who aren't fit for anything, he chooses not only to take up his abode in us, but he chooses to use us for his honor and for his glory. And in the midst of those times when we should be afraid, he shows up and he helps us with things we couldn't help ourselves in. Hmm? You know, you can have the power of positive thinking, but that won't help you in the midst of your world being turned upside down. But you know who will? The Lord. It's a secret. It's a mystery. It's something the world looks into. They can't understand. They can't figure it out. They try to figure out, why in the world do you go to church so much? Why do you have so many revival meetings? Why do you got to just, you know, read your Bible all the time, pray all the time? Why you, what makes you click and what makes you tick? The Lord. They just don't understand it. It's a mystery to them. And I say that it's not only a secret place, the place of God. It's a sacred place. Can I say, the greatest times you've ever had in your life is when you and God are alone and God floods your soul with himself. When God shows you things you've wondered about and prayed about. When God, when you're reading the word of God and God makes a jump off the page and it gives you hope and it gives you exactly what you need for that hour. When God himself makes himself real to you. That's a sacred place. That's a place that very few ever get to. There are many who aspire. They aspire through all kinds of things. They aspire through Gandhi and Buddha and Muhammad and all kinds of things that they go through rituals trying to aspire to get to this place. And yet we found it by faith. It's a sacred place. It's a secret place. But it's a solid place. Look what he said there in verse number 5. He said, He shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. We know who our rock is, the rock of ages, cleft for us, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a solid place with him. Being set on him, him being the anchor of our soul, it's a solid place. Uh, friend, this world is, is shifting sand. It's just, it's crazy how they keep moving the parameters. What used to be black is now gray. I mean, there are some things in this world, I mean, it's just got chaotic. Used to, if somebody told you what they were, if, used to, if they told you they was a Baptist, you knew what they stood for. <laughs> Not anymore. You know, there's nearly 50 different Baptist denominations now. Some of them is as kooky as the day is long. Hmm? I know Baptists that have women preachers. That's not what the Bible teaches. They might be Baptists, but they're not Bible believers. Huh? I'm just talking about used to, somebody told you something. Can I say this? Used to, if somebody told you as a Democrat, you knew where they stood. Can I say that's got to be a bad place to be today? Because everything the Democratic Party was as, as recent as 15, 20 years ago, it doesn't even resemble that anymore. Some of the things that they used to hold dear aren't even imagined anymore. And that's what the mainstream media won't tell you is how many Democrats are leaving their own party. Because it doesn't represent what it has represented for a hundred years. Because in this world, the barriers keep getting moved. You know, I'm not the wisest guy in the world. I mean, the Bible's proclaimed it, but I grew up thinking marriage was between a man and a woman. Not today. Today, you can love whoever you want to. Huh? Well, you can do that and be sick and demented. Hmm? The Bible calls it an abomination. But it's okay in man's eyes. 
You see, in everything in society, they keep trying to evolve, looking for a utopia that they can never have in this flesh. But if they'd ever learned to put their faith in the Son of God, one day we're going beyond utopia. We're going to glory. Right. Hmm? Just think about it. He gives you a firm foundation now and a future to boot. All this in heaven too. But you see, we have a solid place. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changeth not. I don't have to worry about going back to the Word of God and having to get a new copy of it because things change, not with God. Amen. The things of God are forever settled in heaven. And we've got a promise, the promises in the precious book of God that never change. We can keep going back to it. We have a firm foundation. I don't know about you. Most people don't like change. My boy Christian's having a hard time. We've noticed he's been down the last couple of days. having a hard time because starting tomorrow he goes on third ship. It's a change. He hates change. He hates change. He hates change. Well, so does everybody. I mean, unless you're weird. Are you weird, Clint? Do you like change? No, I don't like change. I don't like it. Miss Nett used to I'd drive her crazy. Back when I was working a secular job, every day I'd eat the same thing for lunch. She'd buy new stuff for me to take in my lunch. It's that fridge. I never took it. I always took the same thing every single day. Why do you do that? Because I like it that way. Huh? I get ready the same way every day. If I do something out of order, I'll forget something. Hmm? Now, I'm not going to forget shaving half my face, but I'll forget something. Huh? Because I don't like change. I've got a routine. Well, that's how we are in life. We don't like change. But yet this world is constantly changing. But the things of God do not. There is a place that doesn't change. There is a place that you can take assurance in. And that assurance should overcome your fear. That place is called Jesus. He's my friend. He's my foundation. And hallelujah, he's my future. No need to worry about it. He's already got it all under control. Amen. I just got to get to him. David said, of whom shall I fear? Now, friend, if you want to look around and find things to be afraid of, you can. Or you can choose to look within the things of God. And nothing, nothing, can overcome you and cause you to fear. So which will be? You can either plug into the things of God or you can live your life twiddling your thumbs and afraid of everything. That is a miserable life. I just choose to live in the joy of the Lord. Life's too short to be miserable, friends. Hmm? We don't know if we've even got tomorrow, so why be miserable? You know, there are some people already making themselves miserable about the election. Hmm? Right. I don't care who gets in. Jesus is still on the throne. Now, I will make this prediction. If it goes one way, that means he's coming a whole lot quicker than if it goes the other way. Either way, we need to get busy because people are going to die and go to hell. So too many people are headed to a, an eternity that nobody should go to. So why don't we get plugged into the things of God, quit fearing about things out of our control, and by all means, through all things, try and win some before it's everlasting too late. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.